one. It feels like humanity has failed. It feels like Ummah has failed. And if you feeling and agreeing with what I'm saying, if the feelings are mutual, then I'm sorry, you're not wrong. It's so difficult for those humanitarians, for those awakened souls right now to see the light in the tunnel. It's so difficult to get up and hope. Uh, the justice is gone in this world and there are sacrifices beyond our imagination, beyond what a human heart can bear. There are sacrifices which are causing a world to awaken and I do hope and I do hope that from now on uh, nothing is going to be the same. Let me explain you what I mean by nothing is going to be the same. It is it is about exposure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not keep the secrets of your sins as long as you can imagine he will, you're either going to be exposed on the day of judgment or you're either going to be exposed in this dunya. And we have all the Muslim leaders being exposed right now to the point where non-Muslim countries and leaders, they're asking them, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with Muslims? We have Muslims celebrating and dancing to the beats of Eminem, inviting all the pops, uh, pop idols, pop, uh, pop culture idols, at the same time when our brothers and sisters are being massacred in Palestine. The world is seeing, the world is awaken, not all of the world, and we can't be surprised please don't be surprised we have hadith we have premonitions and we've been warned against this we've we've been said that we're going to stand shoulder to shoulder in our awareness in our uh, attempts to fight for justice not only with muslims it's not about who are you by birth it's about who are you by your ability to use your alcohol it's about what is it that you can see, what is it that you can hear, and what is it that you can feel. Let me guide you through it. When Adam alayhi salam was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands, angels, they were in shock. And what they did to ask the Creator was almost are you sure it, are you sure you created this being and we know that this being is going to spread mischief and blood on this earth are you what is the purpose and then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his attention and for our attention he asked Adam alayhi salam to name things around him and just on a side note, the first thing ever that had been revealed in Quran was what? Ikra. So it is all about knowledge. It is all about the power of your intellect. Now look, akal, cognition, is not mentioned in Quran the way psychology has taught us to believe that that is the, its highest potential. It's not about how you speak. It's not about how you comprehend. It's not how how you use complicated mathematical equations. It is about you taking your intellect to spiritual level. Higher spiritual level is when you can see with your eyes and when you can hear with your ears and when you can feel with your heart. This is when you become a conscious being and there's more, more, more of souls being awakened and being conscious, creating consciousness, conscious being, fighting for justice all over the world. Right now, please feel the power and please connect it with Quran because in everything are ayats. Does it justify the sacrifices of lives of innocent civilians in Palestine? No. You might say to yourself, no, it doesn't. However, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows all of it to happen and there is a reason. You will not see the reason right now. But what you can see right now is that those sacrifices of those innocent people, what you can see, what you can already witness is that those sacrifices, they have changed narrative, inshallah, forever. Israel is no longer a victim. They are occupiers. They are the perpetrators. And Palestinians slash Muslims are no longer terrorists. They are victims and they are freedom fighters. This narrative has changed forever. We no longer as Muslims are scared to speak our mind. We are invited for the first time. It's unprecedented. For the first time ever, we are being invited to media. M major supporters of injustice and collaborations of... Um, I'm not going to finish that sentence. But we are invited there and we speak our mind and we use the terminology which is now being accepted as the narrative. We are being heard. And we can speak. And we are invited to speak. And those martyrs because they are martyrs. They can call 70 people from their, from their families to Jannat Firdaus. This is not what you can see. This is what you can only believe in. If you have monotheistic faith, if you believe in God, if you are Muslim by choice, conscious Muslim, you will believe, you will know within your knowing that they are having this privilege of calling 70 people from their families to Jannat Firdaus. Look, when you die and when we are going to die, whenever is it that's going to happen, and if we're not dying in this horrible manner, we only take in our soul and our sins, and we can't even speak our mind. Our body is going to speak for us. Our deeds are going to speak for us. We are not going to put any arguments forward. And none of our families are going to come rescue us and give us any deeds. In fact, they're going to be greedy for the deeds that we're having. But it's going to be a, it's going to be a different reality. But those martyrs, those children, those innocent people, they have privileges which we only can force ourselves right now in the depths of despair to believe in. And hope is what we have. But it's difficult to hope, it's difficult to believe in humanity, it's difficult to say I'm proud to be human. I struggle with it, to be honest, myself. And if you go back to the history, if you go back to the scriptures, there were prophets who were struggling with humanity. Yes, they were there to call for Dawa, but Dawa is justice, Dawa is just truth, something that you and me, I, you're probably struggling with right now as well. So, Lut or Yunus, they are, they were at the bridge of giving up. In fact, Yunus alayhi salam, he did give up. Have you ever considered that? Go back, go back and reread that story. He gave up. He said, I'm done with those people. They, they, they're not conscious. They, they don't see, they don't feel, they don't hear. I'm done with my prophethood. And look how he ended up. He ended up in the belly of a whale, darkness upon darkness upon darkness. And then he understood. So if you feel that you are in darkness after darkness after darkness, layer after layer, and you're not being heard, you're not being seen, uh, and you're surrounded by people with their hearts which are harder than the stones, go back to the story, because those stories are there to inspire us. We as humans, we connect with stories. What do you think this whole movie industry is about? We connect with the stories. And that's what Allah SWT gave us in Quran. So Yunus in that moment, in that spot of darkness upon darkness, he understood, I've only got Dua. I've only got my Lord. I'm in this situation because I disobeyed my path. And his path was prophethood. Now take a moment, what is your path right now? Have a think. What is your path right now? What are you entrusted with in terms of Amana? 
in terms of responsibilities. And for all of you who are watching and you are Muslims, you have certain duties to represent Islam. And there are three levels with your action, with your words, or with your du'a. Don't even give up on those. Do as much as you can. To make matter worse, Yunus Ali Islam wasn't rescued from the belly of the wild, from darkness upon darkness, just because of his du'as. Just because he was praying, just because he went into Tawbah, and I encourage for all of us to go into Tawbah, and I will, I, will, I will come back to Tawbah in a minute, and I tell you why is it so important for us to not only pray, but also to go into Tawbah. So Yunus alayhi salam, he was saved because angels were pleading for him, because angels were presenting evidence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he was doing this and he was praying you day for you to go, he was worshipping you day and night. They remembered and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released Yunus alayhi salam. So he came back to his post and he continued doing what he was interested to do. All right. Do you think, do you think Prophet Lut was uh, was happy with his uh, with his qadr? Do you think he was happy being surrounded by, uh, by the despicable? But he stayed, and again, angel, again, angels come about and they rescue him. They do rescue him. Do you think our brothers and sisters they don't have angels around them? Of course they do. Those people who are standing up for justice just like it was mentioned in the hadith of the prophet do you think they don't have angels of course they do and there is another hadith to your attention for your attention some people at the uh, at the time of the prophet they said look at least we're standing up for justice at, at least we're doing uh, at least we are standing up on the battlefield. We are better than those who are staying at home. And the Prophet he was absolutely disgusted with that pride. He said, you don't know if you're doing better than those people who are staying at home and praying and making do well for you. You don't know who, what's saving you right now. You don't know what makes us victorious. You have a place. You have a capacity. You have a calling as well all of us we do and it works look around your narrative has changed now toba yunus alayhi salam went into toba prophet salam was asked by his wife aisha why are you why are you constantly doing istighfar aren't you the prophet of allah aren't you promised jannah for those haven't you been there haven't haven't you seen Jannah Jahannam? Haven't 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 you you experienced more than us? Why are you doing istighfar? And the answer was very straightforward. Am I not a grateful servant? He was doing istighfar Salihu Salam hundred times a day. And we now reminded that istighfar is what we need for our own sake, for the day of judgment, and for the worst that's going to come after what has already started. Go back to Quran, let's go back to another story. There is a story of Saleh, and he had been entrusted with a, a camel, and the camel gave a baby, and the camel has been a miracle. And Saleh, the Prophet Sallallahu stayed with his tribe with his people and there was a deal that they look after camel and they look after their own selves and there were 10 people who plotted to kill camel because it became a burden on on the people of that tribe look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't punish the criminals the 10 or 11 criminals whatever the number there is dispute he punished the whole city. The whole city had been destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a punishment and as a symbol, as an ayat for you and me right here, right now. Do you know why? Because they all knew. 
They all knew that there were people who were plotting against the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were people who were going against the contract between Prophet of Allah and the people of the town. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them all. You or them by sitting and doing nothing is exactly the same thing. So Tauba even before those events, it's absolutely compulsory on us. Because we don't know where we're sinning. And right now we should know where our complacency and our love for dunya has taken us, has taken to what we are placed here to be Khalifa on this earth, to look after this 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 earth and the and the uh, welfare of this uh, of this earth. Uh, and people and nature it it was our duty, it's still our duty, but look what the comfort of a dunya has done to yourself and your beloved ones. Don't even look at Arab countries. Don't even call, look at the so-called leaders of whom every awakened person is already laughing at. They are laughing stock. They're, they're, they're hiding, the um, the plotting, the lies are never going to go as far. And this is that time. It's time for awakening. But it comes with the trauma. It comes with the trauma for the Palestinians. It comes with the trauma to, for you and me. Please don't be surprised that trauma is part of your kader. Allah said in, in, uh, in Baqarah, in Surah Baqarah, I will surely test them with something on the, of the loss and something of the fear. That means that if that means that for you and me, when we have incarnated from the realm of souls into this body, into the blood relationships, into our families, into the reality of this dunya, we already, we already have been going through trauma. Birth is trauma for mother and for a child. Separation from the mother is a trauma. And and then there is another trauma, separation from the family going to school. And then there's another trauma, other relationship issues, somebody will die in your family. Some of you experience war, some of you haven't. Now you're experiencing war. Because if you're watching this is vicarious trauma, if you're following this is vicarious trauma, we all traumatize. Please own it and, and please don't be surprised. Please don't feel a victim. And please don't look at Palestinians as a victim's Feeling weak is not an option. A stronger believer is better than the weaker believer. And it's difficult to find justice right now. It's difficult to, to establish the truth right now. Our hands are tied, or so we think. But emotions are transcendent. Meaning that from negative, you can easily go into positive if you know the trick. And the trick is law of opposite. And it had been used in Islamic psychologies for hundreds and hundreds of years. So you have to know that shaitan right now is on your back and he wants you to feel weak. He wants you to feel hopeless. He wants you to ask, yeah, Allah, is that who you are? He doesn't want you to connect with the wisdom. He doesn't want you to connect with uh, with the justice, with Al-Adil. He doesn't. So you feel fear, hopelessness, powerless, depression and anxiety. But by using the law of opposite, you will know that the right opposite of fear is courage. And courage is what's required from all of us. Fighting is prescribed for you. Fighting your emotion is prescribed for you. Fighting your, your, your shaitan, your karin is prescribed for you. Just like trauma is prescribed for you. Just like this time has been prescribed for you to, for you to be born and witness what you're witnessing is prescribed for you. You know, Islamic psychology is about uh, being realistic. It's about incarnating in here and now and seeing it by through rationality. And then accepting it for what it is and accepting it for what is making out of you, but also making sure that it's making you stronger, 
courageous, more faithful, rather than the opposite. This is the message I want to leave with you for today. And this is the reminder more for myself than for you. I, I encourage you to maybe drop some lines, some reminders, some clues, some tips that help you. And I encourage you to be uh, sincere, go back to your new year. And I'm happy that you're protesting and I'm happy that you're being the voices of Palestinians and you're sharing and you're putting your careers um, or your uh, or your profiles even on social media, you know, to the lesser degree, on risk. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you. <laughs> but, but is it about taking selfies from the protestations? Um, not to show, because it's really not about you. It is in a sense, but that thing about you is within you and Allah, it's within you and your authenticity, it's within you and your being awakened, it's within you and your ability to recreate yourself as a stronger believer right now. And please share more tips. Please share more stories from Quran so we all can grow stronger. And we all can be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he accepts from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Palestinians. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.